Hello everyone, welcome to the Jewish Week Online. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. We had the opportunity to attend the world premiere of Follow Me, the Yonatan Netanyahu story at the New York Jewish Film Festival. Yoni Netanyahu is known as the commander who was killed in action on the raid on Entebbe. But there were many different levels to Yoni. He loved poetry and he loved his country. Let's take a closer look and learn more about the film and the New York Jewish Film Festival. When you go to a theater, and you're going to see a movie, you have expectations. But when you see your film, you, you crafted something very unique. The imagery, the storytelling, it, it brings the audience literally into your, your movie. As a, as a writer, how do, you, how do you begin that process in trying to connect to the audience? Um, thanks, thanks for saying what you said. Um, I, I say the word is ruthless. It might not be the word you'd want to hear, but because there's so much, like Yoni's letters, it's a whole book. So how do you select those letters that really tell the story and push the story forward? How do you select the 20 hours from the 20 hours of interviews that you have? So you have an idea of the, the story, and then you just shoot a lot and try to make yeah. it work from there. And then that's a starting point. And at least it's down on paper. Um, you know, I call it not to be crass, but sort of you sort of vomit it out. You know, you don't worry is it perfect, you, but you just right. get it out there, and then from there you, you shape it. And, and I do think also we we were very lucky that we had the tools from which to work with were his letters, and he was a remarkable writer. So he was able. It was pretty much just trying to shape it um, and trying to narrow it down from a huge wealth of letters. But um, we were lucky to start off with such a wealth of you know to work from. And you've been working on this for a number of years. When was the time when you're like, I need to make a movie like this? Like when you decide to make a movie, that is a big decision. Right. You got to find the financing, you got to find the right partners, you got to do all this. When, but what was, when was that moment? I think the moment was um, raising my four kids um, and trying to educate them and trying to uh, inspire them and create heroes for them. Because people our age don't realize that you know kids who are younger than us they don't have these kind of Israeli heroes anymore. And the fact that my kids were growing up without those, uh, we felt like we would wanted to do something to try to give them that kind of role model, that kind of heroic person to, as the film is called, follow. Um, so I think you know we, it really pushed us to be able to make the film. And whenever you, you start a film, um, you, you have an idea of how it's going to end, mm -hmm. but there's a process. and. Uh, there, there are times when you're like, wow, that, that, that actually happened? Did I have that conversation? And right. you, you, sitting down with these people, you, you, you don't know what's going to happen when you turn that camera and you're asking those questions, like react. Right. Um, was there a time when you're like, wow, that, that, that just blew me away? Yeah, that, so many, many times. times. <laughs> many times. Um, many times. I, I think, I think um, when Jonathan was interviewing the prime minister, um, and for people who will see the movie, they'll see that uh, he speaks as a brother you know, as a family per, a family member um, and not as a politician. And I think across the board, people really spoke to us as human beings and were emotional and open and honest. And I think that's really the, th those are the gems of the film, are those interviews. And you, you've worked with a lot of the people uh, who are in the operation, um, the people who uh, documented the um, Yoni's life um, and, you know, the, the, there's, there's, there's an image for me. There's a couple of images. Um, one, one was towards the end when you saw like the, um, the part of the, um, the plane, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the, ramp. the ramp coming down, and you're like, I'm there. You know, like I get it. Um, how did you pick those, like those, those times to like right. bring it in? Right. Um, I, I think the Jonathan had directed those shoots, um, and I think consciously the two of us really decided that we were not going to try to recreate a lot of the footage. And that actually came from the audio. I think having the audio, the actual Entebbe audio raid, raid uh, audio was really, um, it gave us kind of the, you know, the, the, the path that we wanted to, to focus on, which was to really create it within people's minds and not depict it literally. Um, and I think that it helps because it's such a lyrical story that it brought out, it brought people into the story in a lot, a lot stronger way. You know, people are very um, savvy about when you're trying to recreate or do something. And so instead of trying to pretend, you try to be more evocative. What's amazing about 
the, that plane and the inside of that plane is that it was one of the planes that went to Entebbe. When we went down there um, to, the, uh, to the airfield, right. um, we noticed on the side that a couple of the planes had the Ugandan flag. We said, were the, there were four planes and we were in two of them. So that's the actual plane that went. So it was chilling you know, to realize that right. it was here that it happened. So it's it's so so it's really close to reality, right. you know, with the audio and right. being in that plane. I was uh, on a Tagli birthright Israel trip mm -hmm. uh, this past uh, summer, and um, I was by Yoni Netanyahu's grave, and my tour guide was actually on the operation. And when I was when I was seeing, I was like, my, like you, you know when you hear a story from the person, there, and then when I'm, and then when I was watching a movie, I'm like, wow, like everything that I heard, and, and so like it was just so on target. Um, you know, for me, it's like when, when you watch documentaries, like, you know, is that real? Do you, but you really, you took, um, you know, I guess precautions mm -hmm. to make sure that the story is as real and as, as authentic as possible. Right. Um, what, what was something that was like really important to you to make it so authentic? Like, was there a certain part that you really wanted to hit home, like to, to connect? Yes, I mean, I think we really wanted the story to be first person as if you spent you know, 87 minutes with Yoni Netanyahu. Um, and we felt like with the letters, we were able to hopefully create that, that effect. Um, so that was really important for us. And hopefully you get that experience that you kind of go into the film from the beginning and you really feel like he's speaking to you, you know, that he's speaking right in your ear. Um, so hopefully that, that came across. That, that's, that's the next one is like that voice yeah. that just got in your head, yeah. you know, um, how did you decide on the person to do the voiceover? Um, well, the, the voice is uh, Marton Sakis, who, uh, who played uh, the young Mossad agent in the debt. And he just had a quality that, right. that really spoke to us. And, it, you know, you can't get it exactly right. You can't get Yoni's voice. I mean, when you hear that little clip of him, it actually, it's not too far off, but we, um, we just thought he had a great voice. But, but he, really, um, he really felt the character. You know, he really got into it. And, really good. and, and so I think that that's a big part of it also. Right. He worked hard to, to understand the story and all the things that we talk about, sort of the feeling of Israel and a soldier. He just, you know, I mean, you were there for the, yeah. for the, yeah, for the some leaves. of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, Mar Martin, everybody who got involved with the film, we were very fortunate that they really just invested their heart and soul into it. Um, and Martin fell in love with Yoni as much as we did. So, and it comes through in his reading. And, you know, Whenever you release your your baby, uh, it, it's uh, it, it's difficult, right. and you have like anticipations of like what the audience is is gonna react. Right. What have you heard thus far from obviously just coming out of of the screening? Right. Um, is it what you expected? Um, I think the film is beyond what we expected. <laughs> um, and again, we just had fortunate occurrences that happened uh, throughout. So uh, we feel just. You know, very, very blessed that the film came out the way it did, that it seems to be resonating with audiences, and hopefully it will really, you know, make an impact on people. So what's next uh, for the film? The film will be um, in Palm Springs tomorrow. Uh, we fly out uh, tomorrow morning. He um, does. And then, um, and then it'll go through film festivals, and then it'll be hopefully in theaters uh, in April, late April and May. With um, all these festivals, you, know, you, you hope for that, like that big theatrical... Uh, debut in, in the theaters around the country. Right. Um, how does a film like yours get to that point? Well, we've actually decided, um, you know, our main goal here is to get the film out and get the story out. So we've actually put together um, our own distribution budget um, and P&A budget, and we're actually going to control how long it's going to be in theaters. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to play around the country. And this was shot in a relatively short amount of time. Um, how, how did you do it? Um, being as organized as possible, and we, we took a, a scout trip in January a year ago to meet a lot of the people. Um, so that kind of gave us an idea. We did in the credits. There's probably as many additional interviews, audio interviews, people to figure out who were the best people to talk to, and then we just, you know, were as efficient as possible. We actually had a again. I said uh, because of the budget that we have, which was a nice budget. Uh, often documentaries kind of have to go, and then you work with what you have. We had the real luxury, I mean, very rare, to go in April, do the majority of our interviews, some scenes, come back and cut the film as a rough cut, and then realize what we were missing and go back. 
So, so we had three trips, even though it's a short period of time. We actually mm -hmm. were given the luxury to have three trips to Israel. We were able to do pre-interviews, interviews, and then pick up interviews. Uh, and that typically doesn't happen on documentaries. And I think that kind of preparation, especially with uh, Jonathan's talents, really came through. And, and hopefully you see it in the film. And where can people uh, learn more about the film and where it's being shown? Uh, there's a website called followmethemovie.com. And all the information is there. The New York Jewish Film Festival is inspiring uh, people who are looking to connect in, uh, in unique ways. Tell us a little bit about the festival. Thank you, first of all. It's nice to hear that. Um, the festival is co-presented by the Jewish Museum and the Film Society of Lincoln Center. We're now in our 21st year. And um, the partnership is one of the longest running in New York City. We're very proud of it. And we do truly believe that a festival is more than just the sum of all the films that are shown. Uh, great conversations happen here. For almost all of the films, we have a discussion afterwards with filmmakers, producers, and people discuss among themselves. So the conversation to us is, is very, very important. And whenever you start a festival, you, it's obviously a great idea. Through culture, a lot of questions come up, a lot of uh, ingenuity, innovation. Um, how has this festival evolved? The festival started um, in 1992, and it was a moment when many films on Jewish topics were emerging from the former Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. And it was very focused in the first year or two on films from those regions, and it soon became clear that we did not want to limit um, geographically, and that there was a tremendous amount of material on Jewish subjects of Jewish interest from around the world. So from a festival that started out with about 10 films over eight days, we're now two and a half weeks over um, 35 films. And how do you pick the films? We have a selection committee. We actually work year-round looking at films. We have an open submission process, so many films come to us. We have good relationships with a lot of filmmakers over the years um, who we keep in touch with. We also scout films by attending other festivals around the world and voraciously reading festival catalogs from around the world. And you know, when you look at the films that you have, they're all, they're all unique. Um, what are you looking for audiences to take away from this festival? Well, we're looking for, we want people to have a great experience. And we're looking for strong artistic content, strong t storytelling. And we also want to try to present uh, different views of Jewish life and the Jewish experience from around the world. So if people come away with something unexpected, that they've learned something, they've heard something new, They've brought a different perspective to something they were already familiar with. We're thrilled about that. As you can see, follow me. The Yonatan Netanyahu story is an incredible film which gives a closer look into the life of an Israeli hero and poet. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching.